Hi guys, thanks for joining us for our video today. We have a very special guest. We have Corey Westphal from Mobile Assistant all the way from Wisconsin in the US. And our title today is how to run a more efficient practice as a financial advisor. And we're also gonna dig into how to tackle those tough compliance requirements as well. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, Corey. How you doing? Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Paul. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Not at all. I love your tagline, and it's actually written on the wall right there behind you because I think it is so succinct. And But maybe you'll explain to people a little bit about what Mobile Assistant is or what it, it helps advisors with, please. Oh, sure. Well, and, and Paul, you actually had mentioned this during one of our conversations. If you have to explain what you do as a company for too long, you, you've lost your audience, right? Right, so, right. So mobile assistance is a very simple solution. And really what we're, we're created for and what we're designed for is to solve the problem that advisors have of how to capture and accurately document client interactions. And so mm -hmm. the talk, to, don't type tagline is they use our service to speak their notes, not type their notes. Uh, we have you know professional transcriptionists around the country that listen to the dictation, transcribe it, send it back, put it into the CRM. So that's what we do in essence. Very simple. Um, we've got some amazing technology around that that makes it really easy for the advisors to use our service. But in essence, that's what that's what we do. We allow advisors to talk, not type. So you're a professional dictation service, but you use your own kind of patented customized technology to really make that sing and dance, essentially. Would that be that be a good description of it? Yeah, so you know the component of our service that makes us so unique is that the background, the people in the background, we have over 100 transcriptionists in the country that are typing right now, mm -hmm. that are typing right. advisors' dictations. Now, the mm -hmm. reason why that's important is that even though you don't see them, they're the ones that make these notes unbelievably accurate. Um, our mm -hmm. accuracy at mobile assistance over 99.6% on notes. Mm -hmm. um, you compare that to a voice-to-text solution, any type of software that's out there, like a Siri, like a Dragon, the very best software out there is like 70% accurate. Well, what that translates to is advisors end up having to spend a ton of time editing and making changes to those notes. So we just eliminate that part of the process. Once you speak your notes, you can rest assured they're going to come back and they're going to be perfect. Um, and then the technology around it is just to make it easy to capture the information from the advisor. I've used a few of the different dictation services that you're talking about for our business and, you know, for, for, for on videos and so on. And some of them, they're not bad. They're not bad. Okay. But I found it was an awful lot of correction to be done. Now I'm an Irishman. I've got an Irish accent. I speak too fast. Okay, fine. But nonetheless, I mean, I was nowhere near 99% accuracy. I was more like 80% at a high level, which meant there was a lot of back-end work to actually make, make it almost made it unusable because of the amount of time then that had to be put in. I know I'm not alone. I've talked to advisors about this who kind of said, mm, yeah, it'd be nice from a compliance point of view, but I can't seem to get a service or some form of technology that actually will do it accurately. Do you see that as well a lot? Oh, that's, and that's one of the challenges that we have as a company is making sure to communicate and and make sure that advisors understand that there's that component of our service that is going to make these notes so accurate because, um, because advisors have been burned uh, many times by, you know, thinking that the dictation is going to help them so that they, so they sign up for some software out there, they use mm -hmm. it for a couple client meeting notes, they mm -hmm. get the notes back and they realize, my gosh, I've, I've got to spend another half an hour, you know, yeah. cleaning these things up, I might as well have typed it myself. Right. right, right. So that's that's where there's such an education involved in, for us with, when we talk to advisors is that's one of the first things we tell them is like, listen, you're you're speaking to a human being, even mm -hmm. though we have a technology and an app that's in place to get the notes from you. The people that are doing the work for you are the ones that are going to make it so, so good. So you can talk normally. And, you know, I love your accent, Paul, but I tell you what, voice, voice software, voice tech software does not like accents. No, no, they don't like me at all, <laughs> which is, which is kind of funny. So if I'm an advisor, right, and obviously advisors have certain compliance requirements, you know, around documenting what they do, documenting client meetings, you know, it doesn't really matter what country of the world you are as an advisor, you have to document, you have to keep up to date with things from a from a compliance point of view so 
I love the idea of dictation, but how neatly does it slot into the compliance requirements, I suppose, is, is what I'm trying to understand. Well, so when we think about compliance um, at Mobile Assistant, we obviously are going to, we're addressing that topic from a documentation standpoint, right? right? Because when it comes to compliance, that's where it starts. If you can't prove um, and show the documentation surrounding your client interactions, that's where the, that's where you, the the pitfall from compliance comes in because if you don't have any kind of documentation showing what you talked about what you recommended um, those are where the pitfalls are for the advisors if they don't mm. have those good notes if they just got a few notes in the CRM it's just not enough detail and so right. that's really what we're trying to do is we're trying to provide a um, just a peace of mind if you will for advisors mm. that once they because once they speak their notes um, you, you know advisors are going to get more detail than they ever have if they were typing mm -hmm. them or they're having an assistant, you know, look at their chicken scratch on their notepad and try to take some notes from there. Um, imagine, you know, this is one of the stats that we give a lot that I think is really interesting. And that is that two thirds of your short term memory is gone mm -hmm. after an hour. Okay. So if yeah. an advisor, Sorry about right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if yeah. an advisor doesn't have a process in place to capture that information that's in your short-term memory, like right after every client interaction you have, if they try to do it at the end of the day, maybe they do it at the end of the week, they get their, their client list out and say, okay, these are the clients I met with. I'm going to try to remember, you know, what I talked about Monday morning at coffee with uh, John Smith, right? If they try to do that, you know, they get a, maybe a few high level things. It's just not enough detail from a compliance yeah. standpoint. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely hear that. And how did you get into this? I mean, you know, you 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 aren't an advisor by 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 trade, uh, similar to to myself. You're obviously neck deep in the uh, advisory industry. So, so how how did that come about? Yeah, well, you know, our story really starts in the medical transcription industry. So okay. if you think about doctors, um, physicians have been using dictation for decades, right. and so they have used dictation because they're really their, their core responsibility is patient care. So what is, what is involved with patient care is making sure that they're documenting everything that they just talk to that patient about. And so mm -hmm. what they recognized years ago was that dictation is a much easier way of capturing that information and then moving on to their next patient. So they're mm -hmm. not going to spend a bunch of time typing up their patient notes. They're going to mm -hmm. dictate quickly for five minutes and they're going to have a whole page of information that goes in the patient chart. Okay. So we were a medical transcription company only for about 16 years. And right. so we're, you know, we've been in the, in the industry for, you know, 22 in the, in mm -hmm. the transcription industry, but well, we launched launched mobile assistant 10 years ago as a way of getting us um, really into some different in different markets. And one of the important things that I had to do at that time was to try to try to identify which industries could really benefit from high quality, um, mm -hmm. accurate dictation solutions. Right? right, because not every industry requires the notes to be as accurate as what we provide. And so right. financial advisors was an, a no, it was a no brainer for us because advisors just like doctors are mm -hmm. re really are required to have really accurate documentation. And for the financial industry for us has been so fantastic because we're working with advisors that have never even thought of dictation before as a solution. And once mm -hmm. they implement it and they get it into their workflow, it's a life changer. I mean, we have advisors telling us that they're saving at least three hours a week from documenting. And that's time wow. that they get back either with their families or a prospecting or just working and working with their current clients. And I'm sure you had some challenges, the ups and downs of growing your business. You know, I, I know you've got quite a, quite a large team at, at this stage, but uh, tell me about a few of them. Tell me about a few of the roadblocks that you hit along the way. Oh man. So that's a really an interesting question. And it really, it's very easy um, to answer from my perspective, because the, what changed everything for us as a company was when the technology became available to be able to have transcriptionists working out of their homes, be able right. to stream the audio, because then it mm -hmm. opened up the workforce for us where we could have transcriptionists all over the country. And right. so it made a huge difference because when I started the company with my father back in 1998, um, we had 10 transcriptionists that we had to have in an office wow. in Iowa. And when, <laughs> if someone didn't work out and somebody quit, all of a sudden we were trying to recruit people to move to Iowa to be transcriptionists. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was terrible because it was tricky, I mean, tricky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's what, it's what we had to do at the time, but, um, but I tell you, it's been an interesting, it's an interesting correlation when you think about where the world is today compared mm. to back then, like back then the world opened up for us because we were able to have remote transcriptionists because we could, we had the technology to do that. Right. Right. Well, 
you look at what's happened in the last year here, like with the pandemic, and all of yeah. a sudden companies have had to try to figure out how to make that remote working, like really make that po- positive experience. Right. And we went through it, you know, we went through it, um, you know, back in 2000. And so, you know, so it's, but it's been <laughs> that was before Google was born. I mean, that's a long time ago we're talking about here. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. And, you know, and so, but what it's allowed us to do is, is also the, you know, the, the financial technology industry, um, I don't know, I know, you know, this Paul, I'll tell the audience is incredibly tight. Like we have, mm-hmm. I, some of my best friends are, are FinTech CEOs at other other partner companies that we work with. And what we have done as as a group um, through this last, especially the last couple of years, is we work together on solutions. And so one of the things I felt like we were able to provide some some help with is to talk to companies that we work with about the different solutions that we've done over the years to make the Mm -hmm. remote workforce really a great environment for our teams. Um, and so at least it felt like we could give back a little bit there and, and share some ideas and some some solutions that we have in place as a company that uh, have worked well over the years for us. So Okay. It's funny. So you've been in remote business for like 20 years, and obviously yeah. the world has kind of remote ro- woken up to this possibility in the last year and a half, you know, which yeah. is, uh, which, is yeah. uh, which, which is interesting. Equally, we've been in remote business for five or six years as well, so we're quite uh, quite used to it. So if I do want to run a more efficient practice as a financial advisor, yeah, you're, you're clearly the, the king of this. Now, if, if you give me sort of two or three key tips or key things that I should do uh, as an advisor, it's something I'm grappling with. I've been thinking about it. I know I need to do something. It's been on the long finger. What do I need to get done? Well, I tell you, I know it's a little daunting for advisors because if you look at like I just saw Michael Kitsis had had this this um, this this roadmap of all the different fintech companies that are out there and it just keeps growing. I mean, it's massive. crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's massive. It's massive. Yeah. And so that's really overwhelming. I mean, if you show that document and that image to an advisor, they're like, whoa, like, where do you start? And and so what I tell a, a lot of advisors that we work with is. To, the first thing to do is to keep it simple and just right. identify a couple key tools that will really make a difference in your practice for mm-hmm. think about the things that are taking up your time on right. a daily basis. Um, you know, for us, it's, it's taking notes. If you can eliminate the need to have to take notes and type your notes into the CRM, that's where a dictation service can help you. Um, so that's the first thing I would say is look at, look at what can help you keep it simple and don't bring on too much technology at once and then make sure that they work together. You know, like, mm-hmm. like our best uh, partners out there are all are the CRM companies because the right. notes go from mobile assistant into Redtail, into Wealthbox, into Salesforce automatically. Um, right. And so that integration is really important as well. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then the, the, the last thing is one that I think is a little overlooked, which is advisors need to understand that the companies that are providing this technology have amazing client success teams. Almost mm-hmm. every fintech company that we work with, they have mm-hmm. client success teams that work with advisors to help them to get the process in place and talk about what the workflow or the process looks like when you combine some of the technologies together. And so leveraging the companies that you're working with from the fintech com- the fintech world, that's an absolute uh, no brainer. And it's something advisors need to remember that they're not on their own. They're not on an island and they download or they download the mobile assistant app and they're using Redtail. And then they, we just expect them to figure it out. I mean, we're, our teams work with advisors every day to work with how do we put this into your process, into your workflow to make it work the best for you. Um, and mm-hmm. so I think that's an important aspect of just what they should advisors should think about is leveraging those companies and the success teams. And a nice little sort of doff of the cap for you guys. I did an interview with Adam Holt, uh, of, of, uh, who's the CEO of Asset Map, and he specifically name checked Mobile Assistant as a tool that a lot of advisors should be getting on board because it's a bit of a no brainer, which is a nice shout out from uh, somebody like Adam. But uh, I think I think you were already aware of that, weren't you? <laughs> well, I think Adam, for the first time, Mobile Assistant was called a scrappy tool, which I thought was really fun. <laughs> never never referred to us as scrappy, but um, but I. <laughs> definitely get what he was saying and um and yeah I, adam's adam's building and has built um an amazing amazing uh, asset map um uh solution for advisors mm-hmm. it's it's so interesting if you haven't checked it out it's like bring it's like taking everything in your financial world and putting it in a closet and then organizing it and and i think that he's put it that way before and it's really true i've worked with him personally on our our financial planning and when mm-hmm. you have it all laid out like that it, it makes a ton of sense 
And what about what not to do? As you say, there's a lot of potential overwhelm and technology and, and so on. But, you know, what, what should you, you not do? I kind of feel there's a lot of ways you can trip over your shoes here, if you know what I mean. Because most advisors are not that technically comfortable. They're brilliant. That's, you know, advice and investments and, you know, all that side of things. But technically not necessarily that confident. So what should you not do? Yeah, honestly, the the biggest hurdle I think for advisors is is over getting overwhelmed with too much technology, um, right. and that's why you know it's kind of the it kind of really is the same same answer to your question earlier. It's it's mm-hmm. keeping it simple and mm-hmm. identifying the technology that can really help you, and not mm-hmm. trying to do too much because it's it's really easy. It's it's easy for everybody to kind of get distracted by the the shiny new tool, right? Because there's right, always right. something new coming out in the fintech world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if you can really kind of not be distracted, get the core technology in place and then build around it, because there's a lot mm-hmm. of technology out there that will work together. Um, mm-hmm. And Redtail is a great example. Like Redtail has done an amazing job of um, of having integration partners that plug in and work um, you know, in a really a symbiotic relationship with the CRM, uh, since that yeah. is really the home base. Um, and so that's what I would recommend is keep it simple and then expand it out once you have your core technology in place. Okay. And listen, you guys are really dialed in. You, 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 as you say, you're connected with a lot of the CRM systems. You know, you've really refined your offering. Obviously, technology has improved, thankfully, in the last 20 years, which has yeah. made your lives a lot, a lot easier. But if you were to start from scratch tomorrow, and I appreciate the technology is different these days than what was available 20 years ago, but what would you do differently or would you approach it differently or would you promote it in a different way? Just give us an insight into that. So that's a, that's a great question. And, you know, this, this kind of ties in with what, what the newest feature is that we have at Mobile Assistant now that we introduced about a year and a half ago. Um, mm-hmm. And that is the, the built-in assistant templates. Now, mm-hmm. what's a template? So this is what the templates look like on the app. Okay. And what they do is they just, it changes the process. Because if you think about what dictation is, if, you know, you think about it, you open up the app or you call a dictation line, you hit record, and then you mm-hmm. speak your notes, right? There's no right. structure. There's no right. formatting. It's right. on you. It's on you as the advisor to just try to remember everything and try to keep yourself on track. Okay. Yeah. Well, even though it sounds like a simple process, it's not that easy for a mm. lot of people. It's not easy for me to do. I can, I cannot just call the dictation line or hit the record button and keep myself on track and organized. And so right. that's where templates come in. So if I had to do it differently, I would create a template system like this, where mm-hmm. it has the questions that you say and you answer as right. you go through the vacation and okay. what that's done for advisors it's it's given them it's given them structure for this process mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that they're not just free form speaking their notes for 15 minutes they're actually right. following a script if you will and so right. what's the client's name what my, what were my recommendations um, those are the type of questions that you can have built into these templates to keep you on track so you make sure you don't forget anything and nothing slips through the cracks Great. And I mean, I, I know you're quite, so are, you, are you able to tell us how many advisors you're, you're dealing with uh, at the moment? I know it's quite a few. Are, are you allowed to tell me that kind of number? Can I put it in, the, I'll just put it in thousands. We, we deal with thousands of advisors around the country and all different parts of the country, which is, uh, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. And are you looking at an international aspect as well? Yeah. So, you know, we talked before this uh, before this interview today um, about the GDPR and that compliance requirements in Europe, in in the UK. And apparently now it's not in the UK. Things are changing so much. Uh, We're sitting back a little bit on our international clients and just kind of waiting to see where that where that all shakes out, because uh, that does impact us. Right. Because we're dealing with confidential information that has to be protected. And uh, we have all those safety and security you know, protocols in place for the US and for Reg BI, all those compliance requirements here. Um, mm-hmm. And so we're really concentrating on the US market, but I do definitely see us um, branching out internationally someday. It would be, be amazing to come over and see you, Paul, and give you a demo in person. <laughs> there you go, we'll have a pint of Guinness. It'd be great fun. Yeah, there, that's there, right. There, there, there you go. What's funny is, I mean, the, the nature of your solution though, makes it very global in some ways you know yes i i appreciate you have to keep in the correct side of compliance and, and the various regulations but the nature yeah. of it is because it's fully remote because it does work off an app you know once you kind of localized it you know i i, I think i could very easily see it being plugged into a ton of different markets internationally as well very very easily 
Yeah, I mean, the mobile aspect of what we do is is what makes us unique, right? You don't have to be at your desktop. You don't have to be at your computer. Literally, everything you need is right here. It's in your, it's on, the, it's in our app. It's on our phone. Even the notes mm-hmm. are delivered back in the mm-hmm. notes section of your app. So when you're on the mm-hmm. way to meet with a client, you don't have to go plug into some internet connection to get your CRM up to look at your notes that I have for Paul Thompson before I go mm-hmm. into a meeting with you. Within mm-hmm. a few seconds, I go to the notes section of our app. I type in Paul Thompson. It brings up all the notes. And I look at the mm-hmm. last client meeting. I get the recap that I dictated. And I've got the information there. Um, I think that's an incredibly important shift that a lot of technology companies have done over the last few years, which is yeah. recognizing you have to be able to offer your solution in a mobile way because that's where right. people operate. Um, I know it's been weird. It's been a difficult situation the last year where a lot of people aren't traveling as much, uh, but you know, the world's starting to open up a little bit now and, and you're starting to see like the mobile aspect of what we do is a, a key component for sure. And where do you see the industry sort of going? As you said, I mean, FinTech is booming. There's any number of different solutions doing different things. Where do you see the industry go, going overall, and, you know, in terms of whether it's on the dictation side for, for advisors or, you know, overall in terms of, you know, technology adoption? Well, I, what I've seen, I can, I can speak to at least what we've seen as a company that I think mm-hmm. really does speak to what the industry is doing as a whole as well, which is we really have seen a change in the attitudes and the approach from advisors where we're, we're, they're not just looking at how technology is helping them, but they're looking at how it affects their team. And so that's an important change for us as a company, because we worked with individual advisors for many, many years and didn't really think about or focus on the team aspect of it like we do today. Um, Today, I can tell you, we have like I have a big board in my office that shows all of the different companies that we're working with and offices that have Mm -hmm. 10, 20, 100 advisors. Those are the, that's a different approach because now the reason why like the change that we made in our technology to offer templates, templates that can be created by the office that's pushed Mm -hmm. out to all the advisors so that everybody is on the same page and they're dictating and they're capturing the information in the same structure. That's right. been a game changer. And I do right. think that that's the same for a lot of companies in our industry is, is, is seeing that shift where you, you can't just focus on what's the advisor's needs are. You have to focus on what not only the advisor, but how are how is it the technology helping the team around them and the mm. other advisors that are within their office? How do you get everybody on the same page working together towards that common goal? I think that that's a, a really a, it's a great shift. Yeah. Excellent. I love that. So you're essentially allowing a team or a large organization to standardize something that was pretty difficult to standardize in the past, basically, you know, so, so that that really is the the disruption, essentially, isn't it in the, in the industry. So uh, I, I love seeing industries be disrupted. I think I think the advisory industry is is very sleepy in its own little way and, and needs to be dragged into the 21st century sometimes. That's that's my that's my approach anyway. Excellent. Well, listen, thank, thank you so much for that and for your uh, for your time today. If someone wants to get in touch with you or learn a bit more about about mobile assistant, what is uh, what's the best way to get in touch? So our website has a lot of different options on it. You can sign up for a trial there. You can sign up for a free demo. So you can get with one of our, uh, one of our client success team. We'll, we'll spend mm-hmm. a half an hour with you. You can schedule it on your own time, in your own calendar. Uh, you do that at mobileassistant.us. So that's right. our website. Um, you can, if they want to call us, our, our, all of our contact information is on our website as well. But honestly, the, the best way to just introduce our service to advisors is to try us for free because there's no obligation to it. They can sign up, they can download the app and they can start dictating within a couple minutes and see what the experience is all about. Excellent. I love it. Listen, Corey, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it and best of luck with the the growth of the business. Okay. Great. Thanks, Paul. This has been great.